This is tutorial 4-1 in GIS Workbook 2. In this tutorial, we're going to use overlaying data sets for analysts. Uh, basically, we're going to use a new select feature and some summarization and statistics. Uh, the first thing we're going to be doing, as always, is adding our, our tutorial map, 4-1. And in this one, they want us to be working in the list by selections table of contents. Um, it's this fourth option right here, list by selection. And they want us to make sure that land use is the only selectable feature. Uh, you do that by clicking on that to where it's colored in. The next thing that they want us to do is uh, go up here and choose select by polygon. And they want us to select the items within this shaded area. Um, so go ahead and try doing that. If you don't do it, don't worry. Um, you can try again if you want. But basically, they're having us do this to show us how difficult it can be. Because uh, there's an easier way of doing it. So the best way to get people to actually use it is to show them how much easier it is and quicker. Mm -hmm. By viewing the polygon, you can see that we selected items that we are not interested in. So we're just going to clear that. And this tool that we're about to use can only be used in the data view. So you're going to want to be in data view. We're going to use the element tool and we're going to click on the shaded area. As you can see the dotted line came up showing that this is a graphic. Uh, over here the graphic extends but it will not be affected because the actual drawing is over here. Uh, this one's been provided for us. You can use the drawing tape tool up here to create your own polygon and use this tool with that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go up to selection and select by graphic. And you don't have to select anything because by clicking on the graphic and getting these bars to show up, it selected it. And as you can see, it selected everything within the graphic and excluded everything around it. And we should have had 202 items selected and we did. So now what they want us to do is right click on land use and open table showing selected features. Uh, this pretty much just got rid of one step. Uh, normally you would just open up the attribute table, you have everything, and you'd have to click on this button. So it's a little shortcut. And what they want us to do is they want us to hit this D U, which is uh, dwelling units, and they want us to do statistics. And as you can see, uh, a majority of them have zero. Uh, then we have low. We have a sum of 633 dwelling units. Okay. And they also want us to look at acreage. Uh, we're going to scroll down here and just choose acreage. We have a sum of 152.1 acres. And with that, we are done with this. So we can just X out of that. And they want us to go to uh, user code or use code. And then they want us to go to summarize. Use code tells them what that uh, parcel is used for. And what they want us to summarize is acreage. They want to know how much acreage is allotted to each kind of land use. So we're going to use summarize. Uh, we're going to just call this land use area because it is a form of area. Click OK we want to add it to our map and we can X out here 
Um, as you can see, nothing appeared on here because we have to go to this second table contents, which is the source list by source, and it's right down here. If we open up this now, we have our use codes, how many of them there are, and the sum of the acreage. So right now we can see that single family resident is the largest, followed by commercial, then vacant, and then we have a church, duplexes, and multifamily residentials coming in like last. Uh, what they want us to do with this is go to the layout view. And they want us to put this in a text box, um, which is pretty easy. So we're just gonna refresh that. And we're going to insert our text. They always put the text like in the middle of the map. Uh, we're just going to move it over here. Double click on it. And you might want to give it a good name like land use acreage. Then you're going to want to do a press the enter button for each one. Now the book tells us what the codes mean. A1 is single family residential. And then right next to it, you can just put the 19.1. Uh, the, um, the title of the text box tells us it's in acres. So you don't have to put a unit behind the number. Multi. Family. Residential. Four, and you're just going to go through this and for all of them. As you can see, there is a very few multifamily, but it actually makes up quite a bit of residence or acreage. I mean, uh, there's actually very few land parcels for it, but they're large. So that's why some of the counts could be helpful with the acreage right there, because small numbers yet high acreage means it's a massive building. Why duplexes take up a very small percentage of the acreage. They're actually even outnumbered by the churches. And as you can see, it's very small. But uh, if we just come up here to our draw feature with the box selected, we can turn it to an 18 font and easily read right there. And now anyone that looks at it can know the acreage of the different land uses. And right here we have the different colors. So we're just going to clear our selection. So commercial is right there, vacant single family, and so on. And that's it for this tutorial.